Hello wonderful Year 10 pupils, I'm just uploading this video to talk you through a Jekyll and Hyde contextual reading homework exercise and the nature of this homework is to help support you in developing your contextual understanding of the novel. So what I've done as you can see here is the, the task which is in front of you um, and really I, I'd want you to no more than read these things at the moment. Um, later on in the term I'm going to set some questions around some of this reading but as part of a wider exercise and activity and context. Uh, for the moment, I really just want you to have a look at these texts and read them. So part of what I want you to understand is the importance of specific research and picking things out that are really useful rather than just going to the default. So say, for example, we just go to Google and we type in uh, Jekyll and Hyde. And as you can see, Wikipedia is the first thing we get. Um, we get some pretty entry-level questions, who is the evil one in Jekyll and Hyde, which is good, Jekyll or Hyde. Um, some more Wikipedia stuff, some spark notes, some videos on YouTube, um, Encyclopedia Britannica, and then we start to find things which might be more useful. So this is an article from the Guardian newspaper in 2008, and actually this is one of the URLs that I've attached on Go for Schools. So just that one there which I thought might be useful and then the other two are ones I'm just going to take you through now. So this first article as you can see the idea of the beast within it talks about many of the different sort of impacts and ideas and the interpretations and you can talk about interpretations in the examination but it's also good for you to know and get a sort of wider idea. So here's the portrait of Robert Louis Stevenson um, he died in Samoa in 1894 and there's even a Samoan song about um, about travellers bringing back Robert Louis Stevenson. So it talks about the screen adaptations here including a, an astonishing sort of Tom and Jerry cartoon version, um, another cartoon version as well, so there's been a whole variety of these kind of different texts and this sense of contextualization is very helpful here because different generations will refer to the novel and think about it in very very different ways. It has some useful information here about the original length of writing of the text is part of the reason that the text is so difficult chronologically to order is it was written in about six weeks and that perhaps it isn't on Stevenson's part the most structured and the most organized it's important to remember that authors aren't perfect that their novels and their writings aren't perfect creations so you know some of those elements of confusion of the organization of Jekyll and Hyde may come from this sort of very fast deadline and as you can see, you have much more information here. Um, we talk about this is very useful. An equally common Victorian reading of the story was a moral tale on the horrors of the sexual appetite unleashed, um, emphasised in early theatrical adaptations. But again, remember the date. So if we want to be as specific as possible in writing about this, 1887, it's an equally common late Victorian reading of the story would give us even more specific detail um, that you pull through these things out. And again, it talks about Stevenson's own attitudes to things, the different interpretations that you've got, and you know a lot of very, very useful detail. Uh, the most popular allegorical reading in our own day, so talking about us in the 21st century, is talking about how that Stevenson is really referring to Edinburgh um, rather than London in terms of the text. And one of the most famous sort of sources of this idea of Edinburgh was a character called Deacon Brodie. So that's The Beast Within. Um, the Guardian newspaper also has an interesting interview with Ian Rankin. Rankin is a, a Scottish writer famous for creating a, a very grumpy detective character called Rebus. Uh, Rankin's um, written in 2010 an introduction to the novel. Here's a, another portrait of Stevenson. Relatively haunted, gaunt looking figure. And then, you know, he talks about and sort of deconstructs this, the laziness of of the idea of Jekyll and Hyde sort of contrary to normal character and here you know Rankin writes about how this isn't really what Jekyll actually does that he consciously searches for a chemical that will allow him to separate the two sides to his nature um, fascinated by the duality of man and then again Rankin talks about that sort of context that sense of it you know all these kind of really interesting things he talks about the source of the text as well um, and Rankin, you know, focuses very strongly on the ideas of Edinburgh um, being inspirational for the novel 
and as you can see he mentions uh, William Brody as known as a Deacon Brody, a respected citizen by day, housebreaker by night, the duality of man but also the city itself. So again when writing about Jekyll and Hyde it's always really interesting I think to write about the different locations, write about the portrayal of London, the different characters and how these things sort of engaged with and you know Rankin writes really really usefully um, about these kind of different things so I think that's a really helpful thing. The last thing that I'd like you to have a look at in terms of this reading is some sources from the British Library. The British Library collection is incredibly useful in terms of providing wider reading for young people and indeed old people such as myself um, to give yourself greater knowledge and understanding of the text. So there's lots of things here in this section discovering literature, romantics and Victorians, um, the sections on Shakespeare, the, there's an awful lot here so it's really worth just you know searching our website finding things and again when um, the British Library is open I think it'd be a great place for us to visit and have a look at a few things. So just what you can see here is this source gives you um, some images of some of the early theatrical productions so the convention is that the actor um, plays both roles um, cinematically sometimes it's been done by different people but generally the convention is that they're played by the same role and as you can see this article takes you through some really important elements of the late Victorian attitudes, evolution and degeneration. We've talked about Max Nordeau's 1898 work Degeneration before, that's worth having a look at. Um, this text refers to Darwin's Descent of Man from 1871, gives you a good link to that. Uh, you've got some lovely sort of ideas of the poverty maps of London uh, which are really interesting and really useful. Um, the depiction of Jekyll's Hyde, John Hunter, who was referenced by Rankin as well in terms of another potential source of who Jekyll was. And again, just going through this article, we've got some lovely kind of elements of the reality of the time from adverts, the psychological ideas of double consciousness, and then we can see the sort of poster from the 1930s film adaptation that we've seen. This is the one that starts with the point of view of Jekyll, so we see his hands, we see him looking down at himself before we actually see his face, and then the very animalistic, very kind of degenerated version of Hyde that's created. There's some talk and useful information about the Criminal Law Acts. And as you can see, it just gives you a lot of useful detail. And just in terms of that wider information, as you can see on the right hand here, um, so much useful information about the Gothic and these kind of different elements of influencing Victorian literature, literature on London. And again, more articles on fin de siècle. So this is something we've discussed, this idea that there's this kind of millennial fear or, you know, the fear of 1899 ticking over into 1900. And so, you know, why you've got a lot of sort of horror and apocalyptic science fiction novels coming around this time. So hopefully that was useful and um, a useful guidance to widening your reading, going beyond just using Wikipedia and finding some really interesting sources to develop your already excellent knowledge of the text.